Hello and welcome to Basic Medical Sciences. If this is your first time here, please make sure you subscribe so that you won't miss any of our latest videos. In this video, we are going to talk about the Japanese encephalitis. The causative agent of this disease belongs to the family Flaviviridae. So the viruses in this family are linear single-stranded RNA viruses. They have an icosahedral capsid and they are enveloped. Um, and here, specifically for the Japanese encephalitis virus, it belongs to the genus uh, Flavivirus. Okay, so we talked about uh, this, these general features uh, in the previous video. So you can click the link on the top right corner and watch those videos first. When we talked about the yellow fever virus, the West Nile virus, and the dengue virus, so in this video, we are only focusing on the Japanese encephalitis virus. So let's go. In terms of geographical distribution, the Japanese encephalitis virus uh, is actually endemic throughout most of Asia and parts of the Western Pacific region. On transmission, the primary mosquito vector is called the Culex tritaniorinchus, right? And the definitive host for this virus are pigs and wading bears. And in this case, pigs are of great importance because they show high level of viremia and also they stay close to where human beings are residing uh, in most cases, right? Uh, so this is how they get to the dead end host right so humans are actually dead end host and what this means is that humans they are not normally in the cycle of this parasite there is no transmission from humans back to the pigs it's not like that right so humans are uh, not normally in the cycle okay let's talk about the clinical features right the incubation period for this virus is 5 to 15 days. More than 99% of the cases are subclinical, and acute encephalitis is the most common clinical presentation, which will usually uh, be characterized by fever, vomiting, headaches, and generalized weakness. Uh, this fever can be a little bit higher, and then uh, altered levels of consciousness will be noticed right and these symptoms will begin to increase until uh, focal neurological deficits movement disorders psychosis or seizures are noticed right and in severe cases coma flaccid paralysis and death can happen right now let's talk about uh, diagnosis uh, the Laboratory findings include high levels of white blood cell count, um, hyponatremia. So how hyponatremia is usually like it's low level of uh, sodium, usually less than 135 milli equivalents per liter. And this is secondary to syndrome of inappropriate ADH. Uh, if we talk about an analysis of the cerebrospinal fluid, the result will usually be mild to moderate pleocytosis uh, with predominant lymphocytosis, right? So pleocytosis simply means like abnormally high level of lymphocytes in the cerebrospinal fluid. If we do imaging, right, the brain MRI is, will usually show the hyperintense lesions in the thalamus right so this is specific for the japanese encephalitis virus so it will help to differentiate from any other conditions and though these uh, lesions can also be found in the medulla and the pons right but for the thalamic uh, the thalamic lesions is actually specific right so we can also take cerebrospinal fluid or serum uh, and then detect the IgM antibodies, right? So these antibodies, uh, they appear like three to eight days after infection, right? And a false positive can be realized uh, post-vaccination, meaning to say if the patient is just vaccinated 
we can detect this IgM and then we, will, we can make a mistake that is actually uh, Japanese encephalitis virus positive, yet is only post-vaccination, right? Talking about treatment, uh, there is no specific treatment of this virus other than uh, supportive treatment, right? So on supportive treatment, we should mainly focus on control of intracranial pressure, maintaining the adequate cerebral perfusion, and controlling the seizures, right? And lastly, on uh, prevention, there is actually a vaccine, right? So this vaccination is indicated to people traveling to uh, endemic areas where they are going to stay for more than one month. The second indication is when people are traveling to an endemic area where there is a uh, transmission of the Japanese encephalitis virus, they should be vaccinated even though they are not going to stay for more than one month. And the last indication, the third one, uh, usually children less than 15 years who are staying in areas where there is trans active transmission of the Japanese encephalitis virus, right? And um, as I said, uh, the mosquitoes uh, are the vectors, right? So we can control, uh, so we can prevent mosquito bites by different ways from using uh, repellents. We can also use mosquito nets and getting rid of stagnant waters, etc. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, make sure you subscribe, leave a comment on the comment section, and until next time, head bound.